betűk, mint hasonló, és senki nincs, aki kérdi, milyen világ, amiben csak egyszer lehet élni. Az az egy, és túl sok évszakunk szerelme, kihez forduljon, aki már nem visz a tengelynek. Egy folyó is volt ott, ahova ma is visszamennénk, akkor robbant fel a kedvenc nap lementénk. Sokat bír, túl sokat az én szív. Nincs hova, de van kinek Ezért viszem Miattam ne aggódj, túl fogok addig élni Kilátok magamból ha a szemem a szemedet éli, Csak az így gyűrű nőnek, Minden új percen, Mert forduljon, aki már Nem hisz a tengelyben. Egy folyó is volt ott, Ahova ma is visszamennék, Akkor robbant fel, Kedvenc nap lementék. Sokat bír, túl sokat, az én szívem. Nincs hova, de van kinek, Az én szívem Sokat bír Túl sokat Az én szívem Nincs hova De van kinek
Give me one that makes me pay for what I've done Give me one that always wants to be the one Stay the night or maybe stay the day Know that I could take a ride away Köszönjük szépen! Asztalostagotja, Sobrolek Barbara, Szabó Anna, Nizanovszki Fanni és a zeneszerző Jancsó Gábor. Köszönjük szépen! Egy nagyon rövid technikai átállás után 
a Free SFE performance műhelyéből következik majd egy előadás, hogy annyit kérnék a közönségtől addig, hogy a, a büfénél messzebb ne menjetek. Hamarosan találkozunk, ugyanitt köszönjük szépen.
Köszönjük szépen. Mindenki jól van? Kimozogtátok magatokat? Köszönjük szépen Tózsa Mikolt és Kozma Zsófi Rebek a performanszát láttátok. Egy rövid, még egy tapsot köszönjük szépen. És még egy rövid átállás után videóüzenetek és az esti beszélgetés következik. Köszönjük szépen, innen folytatjuk nagyon rövidesen.
amikor elkezdtük szervezni ezt a kétnapos konferenciát, nagyon sok mindenki azonnal örömmel igent mondott és vállalta a szereplést, de voltak jó néhányan, akik sajnos nem tudták megoldani, hogy itt legyenek személyesen, de mindenképpen szerettek volna hozzászólni az itt történő eseményekhez. Ezért néhányan videó üzenetet küldtek, most egymás után Terézi Mora és George Szirtes egy-egy üzenetét hallgatjuk meg. Nézzük meg! Kedves barátok és kollégák, liebe Freunde und Kollegen, dear friends and colleagues, as we all know, the freedom of art and the artist always depends on the goodwill of those in power. This applies also to systems that are fundamentally organized freely and liberal like the European Union. We are dependent on that uh, the people in power act in a way which is not only legal but also right and honest. And what we, can we do when there is not so much goodwill and not so much integrity? When a government, for example, the current Hungarian government, apparently despises nothing more than free art and old trees, apart perhaps from academic freedom and the NGOs doing the caring work, which would be the government's job. We can just say it's a local issue. We can point our fingers and say of every nation gets the government it deserves. If this subtle and not so subtle pressure and discrimination is possible in Hungary, it means that it is possible in every country of the European Union because the systems and the laws aren't fundamentally different. Other legally sophisticated authoritarians could act the same. And that's why it is important to talk publicly about the ever given situation, to make it visible and hearable and ask those with goodwill for they so Kedves barátok és kollégák, liebe Freunde und Kollegen, dear friends and colleagues, as we all know, The freedom of art and the artist always depends on the goodwill of those in power. This applies also to systems that are fundamentally organized freely and liberal like the European Union. We are dependent on that uh, the people in power act in a way which is not only legal but also right and honest. And what can we do when there is not so much goodwill and not so much integrity? When a government, for example, the current Hungarian government, apparently despises nothing more than free art and old trees, apart perhaps from academic freedom and the NGOs doing the caring work, which would be the government's job. We can't just say it's a local issue. We can point our fingers and say that's the case of every nation gets the government it deserves. If this subtle and not so subtle pressure and discrimination is possible in Hungary, it means that it is possible in every country of the European Union because the systems and the laws aren't fundamentally different. Other legally sophisticated authoritarians could act the same. And that's why it is important to talk publicly about the ever given situation, to make it visible and hearable and ask those with goodwill for their solidarity. Art is slow and the impacts are unsure. Being the grassroots is the only real power. Ich wünsche euch und uns alles Gute dafür, mindenkinek a legjobbokat kívánom. I wish all the best for everyone. Thank you. My name is George Sirtis, Sirtes. I'm a Hungarian-born English poet and translator. I was born in Budapest but left as a refugee at the age of eight in 1956 and did not revisit until 1984. 
by which time I had published three well-received books of poetry in English. That first visit changed my life in that I started translating Hungarian literature and still do. Since then, I have returned each year three times, 1985, 87 and 89, for longer periods through the British Council. The third time was nine months. That extraordinary year was a time of excitement, anxiety and hope. The hope was not naive, but it was hope all the same. I attended various marches and meetings, got to know some of the emerging political figures. It was, as I said, a time of hope. However, after the election of Fidesz in 2010, Hungarian affairs became a cause of ever greater concern, and Orban's talk of an illiberal democracy brought that sharply into focus. Right from the beginning, its message of nationalism and so-called patriotic culture suggested a deep dive into far-right politics. The takeover of press and media, but also of major cultural institutions, as well as of legal, financial and civic bodies, and the application of financial pressure as the means of control was clearly escalating. Most recently, it has been the takeover of SFE, the University of Film and Dramatic Art, that suggests a tightening of a cultural and political noose. I followed student resistance in the top-down changes at SFE, the occupation of the building, and a close sympathy of the staff with the students. I wrote about it for The Guardian, for which I had written earlier articles on Hungary. I welcomed the founding of the Free SFE and the support of foreign universities, as well as of individual donors, but the situation is dire and the condition of SFA seems to be a kind of last independent stand. I hope I'm wrong. Köszönjük szépen, elérkeztünk a konferencia záró beszélgetéséig, amit Vágvölgyi András fog moderálni. Köszönöm szépen. Magyarul fogok beszélni, és hívom a színpadra a beszélgetés résztvevőit. Elsőnek Katarina Schultens német költőnőt. Please come to the stage. Másodszorra Maria José Crespo, mexikói, holland vizuális művészt. Simon Márton költőt. És végül, de messze nem utolsó sorban, Tar Béla filmrendezőt. Köszönöm szépen, itt a magyar közönségnek azt hiszem, hogy Simon Márton nem kell bemutatni, Tarbélát szerintem a világközönségnek sem kell bemutatni, de a két hölgyet megkérném, hogy egy rövid bemutatkozással mutassák be magukat, és Katarina Schultens pedig arra, hogy neki egy autoritarianizmusról szóló költeménye is van, ami rövid, és ezt most akkor meghallgatnánk első körben. You start? Okay. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks everyone for staying and it's such a pleasure to be here and in and yeah, 
in this very important uh, context uh, to have a little discussion. Uh, I'm Maria Jose Crespo, I'm from Mexico, from the border town of Tijuana, which is the border between Mexico and United States in the north. And I'm currently living in the Netherlands, um, and I am a visual artist. I, I, um, I work with the territory, I enjoy to, uh, to do video, photography, but also uh, when I research, I usually tend to uh, unfold my research into installations, multidisciplinary installations, and um, uh, mainly it's about uh, how do I uh, encounter uh, different um, mechanisms that administer the territory, mainly obviously the border uh, in this uh, Tijuana. And, and I am very also interested in how uh, there is many yeah, informalities that have become to be formal and that's why I, I, I often tend to uh, look into uh, treaties, for instance, a treaty uh, between uh, uh, United and Mexico, how did they establish the limits uh, through these memoirs of these survey, uh, people that were surveying the territory and I often find indexes, maps, information, then then rather than being uh, an academic or uh, like formal research, I tend to unfold it in like artistic research. Yes. Katarina? Thank you, it's an honor to be here. I just wanted to thank the two performers we just had on stage because that was an amazing performance. And it was just, I, I think it was, um, it did three things that great art can do. It was uh, disturbing and it was uh, illuminating. It made us understand something. It was also in itself, for me, a consolation because it is still possible to do this now here, and that is something that I think actually that you, you um, if, if art doesn't do any of these three things, it's sometimes an indicator that it's shitty art. So, um, not, not always, but sometimes. So I'm, an, I'm a poet and I'm an organizer. I organize um, the Poetry Festival in Berlin for the first time this year actually, because I used to work at the university and as a poet, I, um, I'm interested in the takeover of language by politicians, but also by, by the economy. And this started out about 10 years ago, or earlier, when I was writing about the financial crisis. And I realized that in the financial markets that, are, that there are terms um, that are actually quite beautiful. And they're actually quite beautiful, but there are terms that describe things that are horrendous sometimes. And what I did in my poetry back then was that I was trying to work with these terms to sort of take back that language and put it in a different context. And as for the poem, maybe I read it at the end because I don't know whether it would be a good start. Or do you want me to read it now? Well, oh, I think it's probably will fit in the end as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but probably it would be better to start. To it. start a conversation. Okay, I'll try. Let's see. So this is uh, actually I wrote this when. And this was published by the Academy. Uh, I wrote this when I was watching a Trump campaign event in 2016 before he became president for these four years. And it's sort of a blueprint um, about authoritarians. And it's called, well, I thought we killed that, but it's everywhere. Well, I thought we killed that, but it's everywhere. Don't you think it's remarkable? After all those years of outrageous uniforms, star-spangled, rebellious combinations of green and gold, red, white and blue. After all those years of cap and gown, of beards, berets, of ties, of foreign robes, now all's in the hair, or lack thereof. It yearns for razor-like partings, for puffs and pomade, coffage in orange, freckles on a dome. So let's just say he's getting ready for something, for multiplication maybe. He starts jumping, swaying back and forth on the stage of his convention center. And deftly, skillfully, as if he were just breezing through the motions, he stabs multiple journalists behind the curtain. He's fast, 
he pulls the bloody knife right out of his own back and starts protesting. So why does it sound hysterical if I say, this is happening right here, right now, among us. This is an old song, and we all know the tune. So that's it. Márton, téged, mint egy nagyon népszerű fiatal magyar költőt kérdeznélek, hogy egyrészt szólj egy pár szót a nemzetközi közönségnek magadról, másrészt pedig a költészet és az irodalom jelenlegi magyarországi helyzetéről. Na, tolhatod magyarul. Is it okay? Uh, I, I thought I was I, I was about to, to to speak in English because I'm proud proud of my English. Although it's it's it is most of it is from a kitchen in in Rightly southern so. England. Um, anyways, uh, it is an honor to be here and thank you for the invitation. And um, and and I'm 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 really over excited right now and I think it's it, it is well based. Um, yeah, for a short introduction, yeah. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, actually, I'm, I, uh, I'm a poet. I'm a translator. Um, I, I translate uh, <coughs> uh, things from English, and since I majored in Japanese, I, I, I translate Japanese poetry um, mostly. And uh, I published four poetry collections. Uh, um, at the Elencore Publishing House. And um, and I think mostly that's it. Uh, I mean, these are the the most important things. Um, uh, the situation of, uh, of of literature of, of of the literature scene in in Hungary is, I think, is the most complex and and the most embarrassing question you could ask someone like me. That was my intention. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think we all know the the big picture. I think I think I think we all see the tendencies uh, in the last ten or so years, and I think um, um, it's always. I think maybe it was always hard to be an independent artist in Eastern Europe, but now it uh, tends to be impossible, or somehow impossible, and uh, this is. Um, yeah, I don't want to 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 be too. I don't want to talk to, talk too much about this right now. But uh, but I think uh, last year we were in Oslo in a in a conference much more like this, and very very much like this. And um, and uh, in in that case, I started my my talk with something like like we have to work in a hostile environment. And I think that's 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 the thing. That's 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 the, that's the only sentence I I could I I would ever tell to anyone without any explanations. Uh, we right now, as kind of independent or not right wing or not government friendly artists, we have to work in a hostile environment, and uh, every other detail is just an addition to this. Akkor Tarbélához szólnék. <laughs> um, maybe in English. Um, I know Béla very well. I know his oeuvre, oeuvre uh, really. Once at one point in, in life we worked together more than 20 years ago uh, in a film called The uh, Backmaster Harmonies. And uh, Béla right now I think that he's the most famous Hungarian filmmaker in the world. Uh, I think that uh, uh, he could be very proud that the late essayist and writer Susan Sontag said once that uh, uh, she wants to watch uh, his uh, uh, almost eight hours long film, The Satan Tango, like in every year. Um, Bela uh, was also the president, chairman, director, I don't know, uh, definitely the boss of the Sarajevo Film Film School, uh, and uh, and now he is, or I don't know whether you resigned, but uh, you are the, the chairman of Free SFS as well. 
Um, today, we had a long conversation with uh, Ladanya and Shul Jakob uh, uh, about uh, the options and possibilities uh, and feasibilities of uh, young filmmakers, young Hungarian filmmakers in the world. Uh, and uh, we talked about also something like, you know, that uh, probably in, uh, an, an easier way for international funding for uh, independent Hungarian films would be probably uh, not just uh, not just cool, but also probably necessary. So, what do you think, Bela? Uh, you can speak Hungarian or English, whatever you want. I would prefer because we are in Budapest to talk Hungarian. So, well, hogy az, hogy tudod, hogy mi a helyzet, az tulajdonképpen egy kibúvó, hogy állandóan valaki hibás azért, mert egyszerűen szarul megy a dolgot. És ezt én nem szeretem. Tehát én nem szeretem azt, amikor egy fiatal ember arról panaszkodik, hogy nincs pénz. Én érted, azt gondolom, hogy akkor menjél le kutyába, akkor legyél underground. De az nem mentség, hogy nincs pénz. Te a 21. században a telefonoddal tudsz filmet csinálni. Mint ahogyan ti tudtok írni, van kompjúteretek, végül is érted, mi is meg tudnánk oldani. És ilyenkor, amikor ilyen krízis helyzet van, mert az van, azt én nem vitatom, de ha ilyen krízis helyzetben Általában föl szokott szabadulni a fantázia. Tehát, tudod, ez a, ha rövid a kardot told meg egy lépéssel. Szóval én azt gondolom, hogy igen, tudom, hát itt rengeteg fiatal filmessel dolgoztam a világban. De mindenki azt várja, hogy vigyék neki oda tálcán. Amikor én életem első filmjét csináltam, akkor az zéró költségvetés volt. Öt forgatási nap, egy autóba befért az egész stáb, honorárium és gázi nem volt. Ezt aláírhatom, ez később is így volt. Hát kényeztetve nem voltunk soha. Azért a nemzetközi networking, azt gondolom, és ez nagyon érdekes, akár a vizuális művészetekben, akár a költészetben, akár ugye a filmben, mert a film ilyen szempontból persze elkényeztetett, mert a képeket mindenki jobban érti, és mondjuk verseket nehezebb fordítani, mint, mint mondjuk filmeket. Szóval, hogy ebben a networking az, az, az hogy működhet? Mi az, ami mondjuk egy ilyen meglehetősen apatikus helyzetben egyébként, ami Magyarországon van, mi az, ami ilyenkor segíthet tulajdonképpen? Az biztos, hogy a nemzetközi szolidaritás az segített, és ugye egy kétféle külföldi segítségről beszéltünk a mai nap során, meg tegnap is. Az egyik az a Norvég alapnak a segítsége, ami ugye abban állt, hogy magyar civil szervezeteket támogatott, ezt a kormány megpróbálta becsatornázni maga alá, megpróbálta, szóval, hogy mindenféle próbálkozások voltak, hogy ő oszthassa el azt a pénzt, aminek ugye az lett a vége, hogy a, a, a Norvég alap az visszalépett a magyarországi támogatásoktól. A másik, amihez neked azt hiszem, hogy több között van, meg hát ugye mindenkinek, tehát szóval ez mindenkinek szól ez a kérdés, az, hogy a FreeSafe esetében kialakult egy olyan szituáció, hogy ott voltak az SFE-re felvett hallgatók, amikor is ugye az SFE-t glacialtolni akarták, illetve hát ez meg is történt, és a hallgatók tényleg elég nagy tüntetések voltak, és, és kiállás, és épületfoglalás, és nagyon komoly dolog volt, nagyon büszke voltam rá, hogy valamikor én is voltam meghívott előadó az SFE-n, tehát, hogy, hogy a, ezek a hallgatók elvégezhették külföldi egyetemeken, és megkaphatták a diplomájukat Bécsben, vagy Varsóban, vagy Berlinben, vagy 
Párizsban, Ludwigsburgban, akárhogy. Mit gondoltok, hogy egy ilyen jelenlegi magyarországi, és hát az ehhez eléggé hasonló lengyelországi helyzetben mit lehet tenni azért, hogy, hogy mondjuk azt, hogy a fiatal tehetségek ne vesztenek el? Ki kezd? Katarina? I think it's interesting that uh, Vilata just mentioned the underground. So, and we, because we, the two of us, were talking yesterday about informal forms of organization when there's no structure. Mm -hmm. So, and the funny thing is that in poetry you're used to this because poetry doesn't sell. So, um, the poets in Germany actually really work by networks. They organize themselves. They do readings for no money. They They go out and buy the beer so they can have a bar for people when they have an event. So they're just hands-on. And I remember being in a discussion about 10 years ago when there were like a third were poets and like the two thirds were writers. They were writing novels and they were used to certain standards. So they were used to getting money in advance for their books and they were used to having people organizing their reading tours and all that all that 90s stuff that doesn't happen anymore is the, is, uh, is expect in, uh, except in um, certain cases. And they were just, when, and we, when we told them as poets, you know, you, there is a different way to do it, but it's hard. And then you also need another job. You need a day job to be able to fund yourself. I've always had a day job. So I've worked at university for 20 years and done all sorts of stuff. Um, they were like, yeah, but when, uh, but, but I, that, that's not how it's supposed to be. And, but the thing is, and um, the, the panelist yesterday, Bartosz, was also talking about this. And I think that's important. When you want to do art, you will probably try to find a way to do art and it is hard and it's not the same for all types of art because for of course if you if you do in a performance piece you need certain you need certain conditions and you can't do a film with no with almost no money but there are forms of art that do work in more informal settings and maybe you want to to talk about um, your experience because you you, you ta talked about this yesterday so <laughs> um, yes, uh, well, the context is that where I'm from in Tijuana, uh, all the money in Mexico is quite centralized on Mexico City. Like, and um, since I study arts, I found that, um, I don't know, like spaces and art, I mean, museum, like exhibitions. Uh, uh, I don't know, when, when I moved to the Netherlands, it was like the first time in my life that I had a studio. It was quite, I mean, I didn't, like, when I applied to the master, I didn't even expect that I would receive a studio. And suddenly I was like in this environment of studios with workshops and so on. So, uh, and for men, for all my peers were like, okay, this is, yeah, we are an artist, we have studios. But then um, uh, where, I, where I come from, uh, we always have found these ways of, I mean, if it's not having a studio or if it's not having the funds also, because the funds are often also like centralized and do not come to the, to the north. And the north in Mexico is quite also proud of not asking that money. Uh, uh, we, I guess we rather to like find the ways of doing it rather than, I mean, I think we, we spoke earlier like, um, aligned with like the policies or aligned to how the grant should be uh, be written or like how how the central the center wants to see you as like a north uh, northern artist or like a borderland artist so they rather not to ask that money and just like find a ways and that things can be from uh, I don't know, like, and that's why earlier also um, uh, I had this uh, thought that, okay, what does it mean for the young people also to experiment? Like, I mean, for instance, as a visual artist uh, or in, in cinema, like, what does it, uh, what do you need to experiment to find, like, your way of doing things? Is it, like, a, is, is it a question of access, no? And, like, how does that also can have, like, alternative ways of, of existing and obviously uh, net, I mean, the networking in terms of who do you, yeah, who do you, who will bail for you, no? Who do you, who are, who is your community? And I think that's, that's something really powerful, yeah. Um, Anton, um, mondtad, említetted, hogy uh, neked a, a day job, a megélhetés, az uh, nyilván inkább a, 
műfordításból jön vagy jöhet. Itt van egy olyan történet, hogy Budapest most ünnepli ugye a három városnak, ugye Budának, Óbudának és Pestnek az egyesülését, 150 éves évfordulóját, és erre készül egy Budapest nagy regény, amiben Budapest mind a 23 kerülete hát feldolgoztatik íróilag. Ráadásul te pont a 9. kerületet dolgozol fel, ahol az én day jobom van, azaz, hogy ott egy újságocskát szerkeztek, majd lesz is novemberben veled egy interjú. De hogy szóval, hogy az volna a kérdésem, hogy, hogy mik a túlélésnek a módozatai, mik az, amiből, amit a Béla által említett undergroundból mégiscsak el tudsz menni egy helyre a 25%-os infláció és a 40% pluszos élelmiszer infláció mellett. Tehát szóval, hogy hogyan lesz meg az a tej meg a kenyér? Valamit mint nem, it works. Thank you. Yeah, so it's even harder in English. Um, yeah, so I think the, my method is just panicking, panicking all, constantly panicking and and doing everything I could. I mean, like like I don't. I I think I uh, I didn't have any job or work. Uh, That I, said, I mean, any, any possibilities? I said no for like, like of course, like like writing stuff. Uh, but um, yeah, actually, uh, you have to find a way. You always have to find a way. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, so now, 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 I, I work as a translator. I, I teach creative writing. Uh, I. I'm, ha I'm, I'm having uh, performances and, and practically uh, having concerts with, with musicians. And, uh, and meanwhile, I'm working as a copywriter and, and stuff like this. So I think um, the thing is that I'm, I'm not really underground, like Bela said. I'm, I'm not, I, I think uh, I don't have any, any kind of problems with uh, underground itself, but uh, I think it's more like some kind of an outsider thing, like, like doing everything you could. Like I, I, had a, I had a daily job for six years. I was organizing an art, a contemporary gallery, an art gallery, a small one. Um, Uh, for the seventh district, district uh, local government, and uh, because of this, because I, because I was working there, I think they, that was one of the reasons uh, I, I, I mentioned them that they should start uh, this scholarship, this literary scholarship, Nazibet Varashi Rodami and and they organized it, and it's great. So yeah, I, I don't know. The the possibilities are always always. Uh, It always seems impossible. I think it's just it's just I always have about a few months of money and and I always I'm, I'm like a, like a like a caveman like a hunter gatherer caveman starting planning planning which which direction I, I should start going and find something to eat. Um, It's. Uh, I think I, I I kind of enjoy this because I think I'm I'm kind of young, I'm still kind of young, I'm not sure whether I would be this jolly about this in, I mean, at 55 or something. Uh, right now I'm, I'm okay with this and, 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 um, and yeah, it works like this. I, I, I love this project, the Budapest, Budapest, uh, again, the novel, novel of Budapest. I think it's a, it's a really good project and, and um, I think my, my, uh, chapter will be really good so so <laughs> congratulations in advance um egy kicsit a filmre mennék vissza bélát megszólítva hogy mondod ezt hogy az underground film ugyanakkor a film azért alapvetően ugye mint művészeti teljesítmény 
mondjuk azt, hogy a film írója, a film operatőre és a film rendezője az, aki művész. Ugyanakkor ugye vannak olyan szereplők a világosítóktól, a bűnésekig és a, a, a különböző sminkesek és, és öltöztetők, stb., akik Től nem várhatod el azt, hogy, hogy ebben így csak úgy részt vegyenek, hiszen ebből élnek. Ugye Magyarország egy elég furcsa helyzetben van, a független film az nagyon, azt lehet mondani, hogy romokban, tehát hogy már ugye ez az inkubátor program is, ami volt a, a filmintézetnél, illetve korábban a film alapnál, az... az Hát, hogyha jól értem, akkor megszűnő félben van. Az a kérdésem, hogy mit lehet tenni egy olyan helyzetben, amikor egy országban van egy, egy komoly filmipar, és ugye azt tudjuk, hogy mit tudom én, jelen pillanatban is Brad Pitt és Tom Cruise itt forgat a városban, ugyanakkor a független filmre pedig, hát ugye nagyjából nincs egy peták se, én is voltam olyan filmben, ami tényleg abszolút nullából készült, és ez persze egy tök jó dolog, de már másodszorra nyilván nem akarod ezt csinálni. Ez nem a kedv kérdése. Én azt értem. Hogy, tehát ez nem választás kérdése. Illetve választhatsz, vagy beépülsz a filmiparba, ami ugye Magyarországon egy politikai kontroll alatt van, vagy pedig ö, azt mondod, hogy te, hogy te kívül vagy. Tehát ez az outsider pozíció, ez, ez az egyetlen, ami erkölcsileg is följogosít arra, hogy szabad legyél. Egyszerűen, mert, mert akkor nem tudják megmondani neked, hogy mit csinálj. És kész. Aztán meg, hogy érted, hogy baráti kölcsönből vagy izéből, és nem kell hozzá már nagy aparátus. Meg kell találni azt a formát, ahol te fillérekből tudsz dolgozni. Tehát egy olyan, ez, ez a formának a kérdése. Ez nem gazdasági kérdés, ez annak a kérdése, hogy te ha nem használod ezt az egész szart, hanem kitalálod, hogy hogyan tudod kifejezni magad úgy, hogy egy nagyon egyszerű formába dolgozol. És minél egyszerűbb nyelvet használsz. Tehát ez egy nyelvi kérdésé válik. Ugye azt nagyjából látjuk, hogy a mozinak vége. Tehát Marvel filmek vannak, és, és tehát ezek a, a kis arthouse cinemák, ezek azért úgy nagyjából így megszűnőben vannak, legalábbis ebben a városban, ahol régebben nagyon sok volt. Most valójában egyet tudok mondani, a Circo Geizirt, de hogy, hogy ugyanakkor a mozi megszűnőben van, viszont egyre több mozgóképet fogyasztunk telefonon és tévéképernyőn és, és mindenféle eszközökön. Na most itt ugye egy eléggé, hogy mondjam, tehát ezekben a tartalmakban, amik borzalmasak, tehát hogy én nem tudok megnézni, mit tudom én egy héten egy Netflix filmnél többet, amilyen Netflix gyártású, de szóval, hogy, hogy mégis az emberek hozzászoknak ahhoz, hogy egy ilyen kimunkált filmes eszközökkel dolgoznak ezek a zócska tartalmak. Na most ezt, hogy mondod el, tehát sajnos túl vagyunk a 60-as éveken, amikor is mondjuk a, a, a francia nouvelvág és a, mondjuk a cseh új hullám és az akkori magyar meg lengyel film az, az tök jó volt, és formailag is erős, és hát akkor is viszonylag kis költségvetésből készült, de mi az, amit, amit ma meg lehet csinálni? Hát először is ez a, a képenek, mint nyelvnek a devalválódását, ezt átéljük. Hogy ám, micsodát? Devalválódás. Azt értem. 
átéljük. Átéljük, igen. Rengeteg kép van, és egyre silányabb. Tehát te csak az alkotásod igazságtartalmával, és erejével, és emberségével tudsz ezzel szembeszállni. Nincs, nincs más út. Mit mond erre a visual artist Hollandiából és Mexikóból, de valódik a kép? Um, I mean, I, I do agree that what I was saying about what does it, how does experimentation looks, and from that, like, what is, what are the tools that you need to do? So I think it's like a a question, like a base question for this, no? Like, and also, um, what is the audience that are you also want to reach? Like, who who are you making work for? And 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 I think that's, uh, yeah, that's something that, um, yeah, needs to be. I don't know how to say it. Like, we need to be ecologic in the sense of how do we want to also to use our time and like our resources as like our well-being and like what are we putting into this work and like like are we doing this work for who and who is going to digest this and like what is the power also of 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 your yeah of your spirit no like what what's the, that spirit that you're putting into these words or in these images uh, and yeah i would just think a lot about uh, slowly kind of taking things a bit perhaps more slow and also like not to trying to, I don't know, like, uh, okay, like the world is so like, um, uh, yeah, it's so fast, like there are so many projects, so many biennials or so many exhibitions, but then, uh, yeah, you want to consume, no, yourself in that way or like are you, are you working towards like, you know, like, a, I don't know, medium, uh, goal or I don't know, not not thinking everything as like a competence and so as, as in like a short term uh, production of images or entertainment, no? Because then like, I mean, then what's the difference also between like, uh, I don't know, like art entertainment, which I mean, I'm not against uh, entertainment. I mean, I, uh, you know, it's like both are needs to collaborate also in order to exist, but I think it's just like a matter of yeah, thinking. Költészeti kérdést tennék fel. A magyar nyelvre, meg a magyar irodalomra szokás azt mondani, hogy hát elsősorban ugye a lírája az, ami erős, erős volt. Ugye az a próza fordulat és a próza felévelés az tulajdonképpen hát ugye a 70-es évektől számítható. Viszont a Sokan úgy tartották, hogy a nemzet lelkületét elsősorban költők fejezték ki. És e, e, hát itt most sorolhatnék magyar költőket Petőfitől, Adén keresztül József Attiláig és Petri Györgyig, de hogy, hogy költők fejezték ki ezt a, a, a nemzeti lelkületet, e, és ez úgy tűnik, mintha megváltozott volna, mint hogyha a költő, nem tudom, hogy ez hogy van Németországban, persze, de nekem úgy tűnik, mintha a költészet az veszített volna abból az erejéből, ami mondjuk ezelőtt mondjuk 70 vagy 100 vagy 150 évvel ezelőtt volt neki. Katarina? Well, there is, I don't know, I mean, we, we always actually look with envy to Eastern Europe, Southeastern Europe, because we think that poetry is stronger there than in Germany. Because in Germany there is a cliche that poetry is complicated and you cannot understand it, which is bullshit. And, um, sorry, but it's just bullshit because it, it's not true. And what happens is that they, they, they treat students in school with poetry that is so far from from any of their life experience and from any of their daily life that they don't get access to it. And they teach analyzing poetry in school as a method of dissecting the poem. So my son is 12 years old and he just learned, oh, a poem is something you can dissect if you look at the rhyme and you look at the structure and then you get the meaning. And then you have, there's one meaning and you get it and then you have understood the poem. I'm like, no, you've not understood the poem. That is not what a poem is about. So, but that is still, this, this thinking is still virulent in schools 
And it was evident when, like a, a couple of months ago, um, a poet who is writing complicated poetry, she's my age, um, she won the most presti prestigious poetry prize in Germany. And there was a media house that posted about it on Facebook. And the whole right wing s sort of just like came at her. So there was like, there were all these people in their 50s and 60s, probably people that are quite well off with like typical German names like Rainer and Jens and Jürgen and whatever. Um, they were just like, this is shit. Why does she get money for this shit? Nobody can understand this. And then and we're quoting, quoting uh, poetry that's 300 years old and like the most like the, the three names that you always get. And I could write something like this. And then they, they posted their attempts at writing something like this. And what struck me about this was the contempt for art that was evident in that in these threats, in these common threats. There was a, there's a contempt for art um, among people that think that they have been wronged. And these are the same people that post about oh, climate change is a hoax, and nobody is going to, and they want to take away our heating, and we need to buy Russian oil because, um, and Ukraine has nothing to do with it. Same, same people in, in Germany. And uh, why, did we why did we let in so many refugees? So there's a sense of things used to be different, poetry used to be understandable, life used to be easier, and there is no communication between art and poetry as it is now, and this huge group of people, because this is a huge group of people. This is the majority, we are the minority, when you think about that. And that is something that really worries me, because I have the end of what, what, what was talked about yesterday, when we talked about Poland and also about Hungary. Um, these are the soccer fans, and, they're, um, and they... Even the ultras. Yeah, and these are the people that vote, and that vote people in power. And if we don't reach these people with our poetry and our art, then we're then we're fucked. Sorry, um, that that's just and that, that is something. And what what I think, what 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 uh, the Polish organizer said yesterday, um, it is important to go locally, like in communities, to go to communities and listen to stories and try to to get a basic understanding for what art can do and how art can touch you, and what art can do to you, and how art can be a force of good in your life. And if we don't get that across, then we, then we, 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 yeah, then we can just produce something for our bubble, you know? <laughs> no, no, it's... Uh, um, we Hungarians, we speak normally pretty dirty, so, I mean, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really fine. Uh, Marton? I'm actually grateful that you asked her first because I was I was thinking while you were saying your know, question. What what about Germany? I mean, like like is it is it uh, true in Germany as well that uh, the, somehow the the spirit of the nation and the spirit of people and and like and something like that is uh, is always comes from poetry or, or used to. Um, yeah, uh, <coughs> I think. Uh, there are I, I, first. I, I thought of a, a short, uh, funny story about Istvan Örkény. Uh, it's an anecdote, of course. Uh, when uh, some time I don't know in the fifties or the sixties, I don't know when. Uh, it's a story about him going to his usual second-hand bookstore, and uh, the, the the storekeeper is an old friend of his, and, and he asks, uh, what, uh, "What what what is really popular now? What what people read now?" And uh, and the storekeeper says they read poetry, and and Erkin answers, "Wow, we have this much of a problem. <laughs> that they, is the is the situation so bad?" <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. So uh, so I, th I think it's uh, it's not just funny, but somehow it is. Um, yeah. So poetry is something different. It's always it is always something different. I think. I hope so, or at, or I don't understand it. Um, but um, but uh, in the in the last fifteen years, I think uh, in the general population there is a decrease of reading poetry. It's always it was always a, a, a peculiar thing to read, and it is always like we have the same cliches that you know it's it's too complicated. It's not not for the public. It's 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 really hard to understand. Uh, 
but um, but the other the other tendency in the in the same uh, 15 years last 15 years that uh, the people below 30 uh, started to read poetry started to read poetry again so while the older generations are, are reading less and less poetry um, in Hungary I, I think uh, I first first I read I read about this uh, in a poetry collection called Best American Poetry 2018. You know, this is a yearly anthology published in the United States. And, and I started to, to do some research in Hungary and it turned out that the, these tendencies are the same. Young people read poetry. So I think, I, I don't know whether we have the, the, the power of the, the old great ones and and uh, like Pe George Petri and 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 Jose Attila Jozef or, or Andrade, but uh, I'm 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 pretty sure that uh, poetry is still a very important thing, one of one of the one of the the, the most important things um, for for uh, lots of readers. Um, maybe this is the way we we've, we've been you know we socialized like like. Uh, you know, Shandor Petufi knows something out of our spirit, and and I, I, I think I should agree, uh, even though I have some uh, um, problems. But uh, but uh, the previous or the previous previous question uh, you asked, how can we uh, help young people uh, to, to with, with their work? And I think the, the 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 best answer is the simplest one: just read them, just start reading poetry, please. Just start start go home, and when you go home, when you went home, uh, please f find uh, a young poet on the internet and read three of his poems. And once um, you have a ch you had have the chance, buy their book. And and that's that's the that's the most effective thing because I think in these uh, in these uh, conferences and in these situations we try to have discussions we try try to cooperate we try to organize uh, which is which is the, which is I think vital but uh, but there is a, there is another part which is as as important as this one and and it is read these people just just read them sorry I was a bit long. <laughs> It's okay. Um, as for the final round, before I would like to 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 to, to give the floor for the audience as well. Uh, I have one question, and uh, uh, this question concerns AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and um, artificial intelligence uh, uh, is uh, is. Uh, of course, this is a rising thing, and um, um, let me tell you a personal story. A couple of years ago, I've been to the uh, film festival in Cannes, and uh, one of my really beloved uh, filmmaker was present there, a uh, uh, Chilean artist li living in Mexico, uh, or work, uh, used to work in Mexico, uh, Alejandro Odorowski. And he had a project um, uh, which was like a grandiose project. Uh, he wanted to make it also as long as uh, Satan Tango, uh, seven, eight, nine hours long and so on. And it was uh, a science fiction story of Frank Herbert, uh, The Dune. Uh, and um, uh, later uh, David Lynch made this, uh, this uh, story a film. Actually, this is the worst film of, I think, in my opinion, of. Uh, uh, David Lynch's, um, but uh, he really had a, a storyboard which was like a 2,000 pages long uh, uh, comic book uh, and uh, he had a fantastic cast from Mick Jagger to Orson Welles and Salvador Dali uh, and so on. And um, and I just read an article earlier this year that uh, someone uh, made it with AI a kind of a real movie uh, and uh, this is a little bit uh, scary for me and you know if uh, if uh, you know someone uh, puts to the computer let's say uh, 50 uh, Shimon Martom uh, uh, verses then uh, then then the engine can make you know the the, the 51st the 52nd and the 53rd uh, so it's uh, 
Uh, my question is that we humans uh, uh, in, in these different fields like visual art and film and poetry and prose and, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, and else, uh, so it's uh, how can we outs our outsmart uh, uh, artificial intelligence um, in, in these things? So what do you think? Bela? I have feel like in it too. Tina, I am. So, well, we are machine at me, I'm to a toki, or make a Michelangelo David yet make to Nachinani. To Nilik as a most to lot as a taking that. No, as any good sort of a guess. Maria Jose. Um, I would say that, um, I don't know what you say about poetry, like, yeah, how can poetry be read, like, oh, what is this, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, it's too experimental and so on, and I think, I mean, if, if a using AI is, like, um, could, I mean, could be responding just like as the moment we are living, no? It's like as using, I don't know, a drill or using a, a computer to write something or Photoshop to make a sketch. So, I mean, I'm not, uh, I think it can, it can be helpful as a tool and I, I, I don't think we should deny that we live in a moment that is possible to do this or that, no? Yeah. I actually wrote one chapter of my poetry book that comes out in the fall with ChatGPT. Because okay. I prompted ChatGPT with really absurd prompts and m s try to get them to say stuff they wouldn't say. And it was actually, it was funny. And if you have good material you can work with. No, I think that you cannot, I think, and this, this is why the, the performance that we saw here is so important. Um, poetry is a form that is really open to other forms of art, um, to dance, to performance, to music. And what you cannot reproduce is the body on stage and the voice. And we see that in, in events when we have you, have, you have events and the events are full and you have, you, you, we don't have enough chairs and people are crammed into the event space, but they don't buy the poetry books. Mm -hmm. So they just go there and they want to hear the person on stage and they want to relate to a person on stage and the immediacy of the experience that is transported. And this is, of course, um, a problem for page poetry, but it's good for stage poetry or for poetry that functions both on the page and on the stage. And social media is also a factor, of course. So because I mean, the the, the Instagrammable poetry will probably sell better than the long poems that I tend to write. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, first of all, I love to have a talk, a chat, or something like that with a real uh, artificial intelligence, but this is not. Be that we have language models with uh, algorithms, and this is not an artificial intelligence. It has nothing to do with intelligence. It, it's, uh, it's an algorithm counting uh, probabilities of, of uh, the, the sequences of words, and it's, it's not intelligence. Uh, anyways, I'm just, I'm just mad because of this. Uh, but uh, the, 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 the picture and image generating uh, AIs are much more evolved, I think, than the chat GPT one. Uh, years ago, I used, used uh, a chat, uh, chat bot Inspire Robot, it was called Inspire Robot. It was half a joke, someone just made it as a joke. Uh, you, could, you could generate inspiring quotes for yourself, like a dozen a time, like just one after the other. And there were some kind of patterns and, and, uh, and a limited, limited number of words. And because of this, it made spectacular mistakes. I loved it, it was so bad. Or the, or, the, or, the, or the syntax, the logic, the whole thing was was a total crap. I mean, like like it's not not just not just not just average. I, I hate ChatGPT because it's average. It's it's it some it it feels like when when uh, like like, oh, like I, I couldn't breathe. Like like please something should happen in the next next sentence, but never happens. It's it's average. It's always average. Inspirebot was on the other hand, it was a genius. 
It was, I, I stole about two or three sentences uh, in my third poetry collection uh, from Inspirabot. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, so sorry, sorry about the, 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 the story again. Um, I think th these, are, these are amazing possibilities. Uh, now I'm afraid most of it is just hype. Everything is, everything is about AI, everything is about chat GPT. Right now we have a language model and we have some image generating algorithms. And of course in the, in the not so distant future these are going to indicate some, some huge differences of, uh, in our life uh, from now. But yes, uh, like, like, like now, but, uh, but right now it's, it's more, more like hype for me. I'm I'm quite excited and I'm and I'm really curious, but I think this is this is not the thing. This is just the the beginning. Thank you, and I'm pretty sure that there will be questions from the audience, or at least I hope. Uh, Peter, um, I don't know. But <clears throat> Thank you. What about changing the institutional structure? And yes, that means politics. And, uh, and I raise this because I do think, I completely agree and I like very much the way Bela defined the personal and moral freedom of someone who does any kind of art. And th we have that opportunity as far as we are not imprisoned or worse. But still, when we live in a political community, let's say in a country, it's for us to decide in what ways and to what extent we want to have an impact on the collective decision making or the lack of it in that country. And if we do any kind of art, including the participatory form of slam poetry, which is, by the way, not necessarily poetry at all, any kind of text in three minutes without using an instrument, so then it means we have a voice. We have a voice which can reach more people than what a, what a person without such a special voice can reach, and then I don't want to use the word responsibility because I feel always that it has a moralizing tone, but it seems to me that we have something to think about whether we use our special voice in some ways, for example, to inspire fellow citizens of our country or our common Europe or broader global communities to make the decision that it's important to go to the decision, the public decision-making bodies, including the parliament, for example, where the law about the national cultural fund of a country like Hungary is made. And, uh, and I think it's important in a way, and, and I understand that, of course, that art cannot be an instrument, and I finish here quickly, just I have to make this point, but, but it seems to me that it matters that we are facing a extremely strong fashion of trashing politics and trashing politici politicians without any differentiation. We are living in an environment where the definition of cool for someone is if someone declares that she or he hates politics and politicians. And I think it's a question whether in films, poems, slam performances, other performances that we just saw, novels, elsewhere, we somehow go against that wind. Again, not in a way which would instrumentalize art because then it would create bad art. Art should never be an instrument. Anyway, I hope it's understandable, so I'm raising how do you see the role of art poetry, other literature, film, other forms of art in somehow inspire some sort of serious thinking about how, should, how we should make our collective decision making or self-governing structure work in a country that the 
cultural institutions would not be controlled politically, as Béla mentioned, was the situation to a great extent in Hungary these days. So how can we change it? I can be, you hear me. No one, no, no one can hear you, Bela, in the back rows. Okay. You know how it's going. You are doing your life. You are watching. And you see thousands of things. And something is just moving you. Something touch you. And afterwards, you are transforming. And the question is, you're, you know, it's, it is a moral question. What you see, what you want to sharing with me, and you know what I think about this political shit now, temporarily. We see. It's, it's going down, it's going down. I, I think we are much stronger than them. I wanted to pick up on that because that is a discussion that has been following like poets in Germany for a while too. Um, we talked about this 10 years ago, and I, I used to have one opinion, and then I had quite the opposite opinion, and now I'm somewhere in the middle, <laughs> so I'm still not decided on that. I mean, the, the thing, I used to be of the mind that I said, okay, poetry is per se political, um, and uh, let's think about Mandelstam and his writing poems about bees, which was not which was political per se because the bee had a certain function it was supposed to repre be represented in a certain way and that he wrote about bees in a different way was political in that moment in time. But um, I, and then you have, you have poetry that inspires. You have someone like Amanda Gorman. I mean, she was there for the government. And then you, you put yourself in a position of being instrumentalized in a way. And also, and that is the issue, the, the, you, have to, you have to dumb it down in a way. So because the, the potential for manipulation is there. And the whole, all, all the tools that poetry is using to, to make poems that work um, and to, to use rhetoric is the same, re the same tools that politicians when they're good, when they're good rhetoricians, um, when they're good at rhetoric, that they're using in their speeches. So what you can do is you can expose the, the, the patterns, how language is used to manipulate people. That is something that poetry can do. You can imitate it, and while imitating it, show how it is done. Um, and you can try, and there are, um, for example, spoken word artists, not, not necessarily slam poets, but spoken word artists that try to come across with political messages directly. And that can have an impact on stage, and that often works when the person is on stage and is a good stage person. Um, but if you read those texts, they are quite, they're really simple. The structure is really simple. So, and they, will, they do not survive the moment, they're a document of a moment in time and of certain issues that have been represented by a poetry. And then there is a third form, and that is, for example, Brecht, Bertolt Brecht. He wrote a poem, um, 700 intellectuals are, um, oh God, what is unbeaten, are praying to an oil tank. So, and that is, a, I think it's, I don't know, from the 30s, I don't know, I've, I've forgotten. And that is a poem that still works today, even though it is a political poem. And I think that is the hard, the hard form of political poetry to sort of get something from the moment but still write a poem that might be read 90 years later or 100 years later and still work as a poem. My two cents. I think this is almost as difficult as, as Andres' first question. 
uh, my problem with this thing is that uh, that I know this kind of responsibility you're talking about, and obviously we are in this uh, kind of spoken word slam poetry scene together for almost 10 years now. Uh, I was kind of, I'm, I'm somehow I'm still part of this and, and much more like I was. Uh, but uh, the, the responsibility is somehow, uh, for me, it's depressing. And it's not because it's not because I don't want any responsibilities, and I don't think uh, that when you have um, the opportunity to get on stage and talk to about I don't know three hundred people who are mostly really curious about your stuff, uh, you, you you shouldn't say something important. I think you should. Uh, the problem is that uh, we do this for more than ten years now. And uh, I think you too, and uh, I'm sure I do have uh, videos on YouTube with about, I don't know, 50,000 views talking about how, what, what is the problem with the Hungarian politics. Uh, some of them are, are more complicated, some of them are quite simple. And we did this for years, and we, we did our best, I guess. So maybe we were, some of our poetry was crap. and. Uh, I can agree with that. But uh, the problem is not the, the responsibility. The problem is that this is not a, not a function for a human being. This is, a, for me, this is some kind of a dream. And these kind of dreams, I think, you, they, they could crush you. I, can't, I, I, I couldn't live. I think, I think the mo main reason I stopped doing this, that I couldn't live with this kind of... Uh, mindset that I have to do with something, I, I, I have to change the world, I couldn't. Maybe I could make a small kind of, small part of difference. I was, I was re-watching re some of Bela's film, films uh, when I was, uh, when I was uh, preparing for this uh, um, um, uh, conversation and, and you know, how many, how many how many moments, how many hours of, of morality, how many, how many, how many uh, serious and, and hard and, and, and uncompromising moments in those films, for example, which is quite well known in the world. And even this, somehow, is not enough. It doesn't mean that, the, I think, it doesn't mean that these are something, these films are not good or something, wrong with them. I mean, this is, I think it's more complex than having responsibilities. It's not, it's not a responsibility, it's a dream. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, <I don't> <laughs> Any more questions from the audience? <laughs> yes, in the back row. Mondhatom magyarul, le lesz fordítva? Persze. Jó. Csak azon gondolkodtam, hogy nem is kérdés, ez egy megjegyzés, aztán az lehet, hogy válasz generál. Egy kamaszkoromban, amikor írtam, akkor azon gondolkodtam, hogy nincs elég nagy tragédia a világban, amiről írni lehetne. Túl langyos a világ. És valahogy úgy érzem, hogy még jót is tesz a művészetnek, hogyha esetleg elnyomás van, vagy tragédiák vannak a világban. Az Eszterházi írt erről van, igen. Ezt pont nem olvastam tőle, de ez jutott eszembe az egész beszélgetésről. Köszönjük. Reagálás erre. Ha nincs, akkor viszont kérdezném, hogy van-e még kérdés. Hát és te nincs több kérdés, és még tulajdonképpen megkérdezném azt, hogy valakinek van-e valamilyen zárszóigénye, valami, amivel befejezhetnénk ezt a kétnapos konferenciát, akkor az nem maradjon benne. Az mondja el.
Okay, I'm talking too much today. I just wanted to talk, say one thing. Um, the Ukrainian poet Halina Kruk was at the Poetry Festival in Berlin last year. Um, and she uh, did a speech. She was also there as a poet, but she also did a speech. And she was really pessimistic about the role of poetry in crisis. Um, she said, um, it is not a, it can, a poem can't change anything. It's not a tool of war. I would prefer my poems to be weapons. That was a sentence that would actually really controversial or discuss controversially. Um, but still, what happened at the same time, and there was Halina, but also other Ukrainian poets like Karina Kalitko or Irina Tsielik or, um, or uh, Katarina Vapkina, they wrote poems about the war and about the situation, so they, that, which is a really hard task. And all of them talked about how hard it is to actually do that. Um, but what they do is they document a moment in history and maybe an, a truth that, that, is, that is independent from this moment in history. And I think that is something that poetry can do. So, um, but at the same time, uh, what Halina said was the the big novel, not the big poem, but the big novel about this will be written by someone who's in Europe and who is safe, in middle Europe and safe. So I think poetry can can work like that, and maybe art can can do that, but it's harsh on the people who actually have to do that. So I want to retract my earlier statement that you, if you want to do art, you can do art. It, of course, it, becomes, it, it depends on the circumstances. So I admire everyone who does art under circumstances like here, but also in, in other countries. Thank you very much for sharing this. Thank you very much for the participation. And uh, thank you very much uh, for the audience to listen to us. Bye-bye.